to welcome you to the What God is Not podcast, where you can join Father Michael O'Loughlin and my godmother, Mother Natalia. Hey friends, this is Mother Natalia. Today's episode is Father Michael's again, and he is going through a couple different prayer books that we have, um, one of our Ruthenian Byzantine tradition and one from the Melkite tradition, and sharing some of the prayers, some of the rules of prayer, some of the, um, yeah, we go through some really practical ways to incorporate that into your daily life if you so desire regardless of whether you're single or married, have kids, don't have kids, and some ways to just make sure that you're turning to the Lord throughout the day and, um, yeah, recalling His presence. If you are a hashtag banter hater, you'll want to skip ahead to approximately timestamp 915. Glory to Jesus Christ, Mother. Glory to Him forever, Father. I just had a realization when you said that. I'll say what you said because it was before you hit record. Uh, we just prayed the Prokemenon for the Ascension, and yes. you said it's the last day that we pray that um, prayer, which is true because today's the leave taking. But I pray um, every liturgy. Well, yes. That's not my question. Uh, but did you really know that? But, or are you just saying yes? And no, I did know that because I've about. heard. Yes, um, it's during, it's right before the entrance um, during the Trubicon, right? No. No, it's somewhere around the Anathema. I don't know how you would know this. It's done silently by the priest. Some priests do it out loud. Okay. Well, I do it out loud. I do do it out loud because I because um, if if the priest is able to, so basically it's when the priest turns around after distributing the Eucharist and he puts it on and then he has to, if the priest has a secondary um, cutting board, then mm-hmm. he, he used that for the particles that are our, that are our Lord that are not the um, commemorative particles. So mm-hmm. in other words, when a priest turns around after the Eucharist, before he can give the greeting after the reception, there's a few things some priests have to do to get, the gift ready to bring to the side altar. And so if there's a lot of things he has to do, then usually the choir is done singing and then there's just silence. So if that's the case, then I will, I will, I'm incensing the gifts before I turn around and give the blessing with them. That's when you say that you say it during the incensation right. of the gifts. Um, but if, if you don't have much to do, then you're actually saying that prayer while the choir is still singing. And so mm-hmm. the people would I've, not hear it then. Yeah. Um, the I was thinking of right before the entrance when the priest is like putting his hands up and but he's saying the he's yeah. also saying the trubicon, not the he is, yeah. Um yeah. Um you say it thrice, is that true? Let's see. Okay. It just uh, seems like okay. a different language when you say thrice, so I, I spoke in Spanish for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Have I told you? So this is really crazy to me. <laughs> Um, I think I've already mentioned this on the podcast before. I think there is like, I was just talking to Father Dufresne about this. I think there's a part of the brain that's like the foreign language part of the brain. Mm. Um, because when I was like dabbling a little bit in Ukrainian, uh, and I was trying to say things in Ukrainian, if I couldn't think of the word in Ukrainian, I, my brain automatically filled the word in, Mm. in Spanish, not English. Isn't that fascinating? Have I shared yeah, that I, with you I, before? No, but I I, I know oh. that from my own experience because when uh-huh. I when I would travel through Europe when I was in college, and I would try to learn all the greetings like on the train to the new country, uh-huh. and it, it I would always have to turn off the other like if I'm going from Spain to Italy to France like I I I would almost always just say say the word if I did not practice in the language of the country I'd just been in previously because uh-huh. that was on my mind yeah. you know. And I would never just say it in English. Instead, I'd say it in some foreign language, yeah. but not necessarily one of the country I was in, which is probably offensive to them, especially to the French. Okay, none. Of, <laughs> okay, none <laughs> Sorry, of this Pauline. is what I was getting at with the "be exalted <laughs> above the heavens." Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So this is the Procumenon for the Ascension, and be exalted above the heavens, O God, and let Your glory be over all the earth. And we typically pray that, like before meetings and things, um, mm. oh, because during Ascension season. Yes, during Ascension yes. season, 
because during this time after the ascension, I almost said extension, after the ascension until Pentecost, we don't pray the heavenly king. Um, and that's normally the prayer that we pray before meetings. So here's my question. We have the leave taking of Ascension on Friday and Pentecost isn't until Sunday. So what do we pray from Friday night to Saturday night if we have a meeting? We just can't have any meetings on the Saturday between Ascension and Pentecost because there's no way to pray. Reverent (laughs) reverent silence. No, you you know, because so- Do you understand my question? Did I articulate that? I totally understand the question, yes. So I, I think- I imagine what I would do if I was just being picky about it would be to pray for the dead. Because mm-hmm. that's like the day, it's the, the day it's all souls. Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. But, but if you look, I think I like inserting be exalted into the places where normally we would do heavenly king or Christ is risen. So when, when Pascha comes along, we now stop doing heavenly king, which is a prayer of the Holy Spirit until Pentecost when we receive the Holy Spirit. So, you, there are times when we insert Christ is risen instead of the heavenly king and the glory to you, O God. So I like to insert be exalted because there is precedent for that because we sing be exalted at the end of the divine liturgy instead of where we did Christ is risen during ascension until mm-hmm. Pentecost. So I like doing that, but I think the more authentic So you do that is, like during the liturgies? Like well, during it's, vespers it's, and stuff? Oh, um, no, I, I do it when oh, I'm okay. praying silently, but if in, during Vesper stuff, there's just nothing. You just, you just don't have I anything. I know. I thought you were saying, I thought you were saying that you insert, be exalted there. Oh no. I do it when I pray privately okay. sometimes. Yeah. Got it. Okay. In my private prayer. So if I'm praying privately Vespers or Matins, yeah, I'll, I'll sometimes do it just because I like the prayer. Um, mm-hmm. but there is, but there is, uh, but there is precedent for what I said earlier, which is reverent silence because, uh, that's we would just we would just say nothing at that time. So, I I wouldn't want to say nothing. I'm I'm just joking about reverent silence. But there's so many other prayers you could pray. Our Father, you know, so many other prayers yeah. that you. I mean, I was also obviously joking about the fact that there, there's nothing that we can pray. Yeah, this is so <laughs> fitting to my topic today. Really? Actually, it is. It is. Okay. So. Well, then this is a good transition. Except that I want to show people the mug in case this is on video. Um, oh. We've now had like three or four episodes in a row where we're like, this might be video or it might not, but pretty soon we're going to actually know Um, because I'm drinking out of my co-host mug like you were last time. So these are all pictures of Father Michael. What's your favorite photo of Father Michael from that? I'm asking you, I don't have my own of you, but I have your mug here too. So Um, one of our listeners just took a bunch of photos off of social media and gave us each a mug of a bunch of faces of the other. um, This one is my favorite photo. Shout out to Anthony Tamaka who took that one. That's because I, I was looking at you. Yeah, but um, people love that the one. They're reason, like, "Oh, what were you looking at?" I was like, "I was looking at Mother Natalia." They're like, "Oh." <laughs> so the reason I love that photo. So this made me cry. This is a really tender oh. thing that I'm about to share, Father Michael. Um, okay. Several years ago. Um, several years ago, uh, our friend Father Steve Flynn. Um, had seen that picture and he was like, he said something about like, I love this picture because um, like the way that Father Michael's looking at you is just so beautiful. And I was like, oh, I don't remember telling you that I was there for that photo. And he's like, you didn't tell me. I just know because that's how Father oh. Michael looks at you. And I was like, I probably started, <laughs> I think I did start crying. I'm sure I started crying. Oh. Um, I was like, that's really sweet. He has that intuition sometimes. He does. Maybe maybe we'll put that photo as the uh, as the photo, even though we probably used it before, as the photo. I think for we can repeat it. For, that would be the. I think we can. That would be that would be great. Since it came up in banter time. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I'm honored. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, I I have fallen in love with this prayer book. Do you know what this prayer book is, Mother? Mm, as you're the public prayer book. This is the Melkite Publicans Prayer Book. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It is, it's published by the we Melkites. Use that, we use that when we travel sometimes. It's incredible. Um, Sophia Press, published in 2020, um, Boston, Massachusetts. This is, I, I think it's always kind of out of print. It's just, it, it goes so quickly. But if you can get your hands on this prayer book, if you are in any way 
um, Byzantine or Byzantine adjacent or biz curious, um, then <laughs> then I would I would highly recommend this book. I I'm not even gonna go into the details of everything in this prayer book. Um, I just want to highlight a couple things today that I think are so incredibly helpful. And there's a million more things in this prayer book, but things that are incredibly helpful to the daily lives of of the Byzantine Catholic in the world. And these are things that I didn't even know existed. I think that's why I want to bring them up today because most of them are, so some of the things I knew existed, but two of the two of the three things I want to mention today, I did not know existed. But hmm. before that, I want to talk about this book. Um, this is the, uh, the, the Chasislav that is put out by, um, I'm going to find the official name here, uh, this is. I was going to say Eastern Jack Christ- yeah, Fiegel, so but Eastern that's Christian, not the answer. It, I, that's exactly what I was going to say too. So Eastern Christian Publications, <laughs> which is run by Jack Fiegel, and we just call it Jack Fiegel. Um, so yes, Eastern Christian <laughs> Publications. Uh, this is a book that was originally published, I believe, in 1966. Um, the basically we just our our Jack Fiegel and Eastern Christian Publications updated the translation to fit our current translation that our liturgical commission has been doing. So this is the, the what's called the Book of Hours, the Chasislav, um, this one, which was published in 20, doesn't even say, it just, it just mentions the older times. Anyway, very recently, 2022, there we go. 2022, this was just, it's, it's, a, it's the old book from the 60s that has been uh, retranslated into our current usage. And it's very good too. It it has it has a lot of stuff. Um, my only real issue with this book, and I, I've shared this with Jack, um, is that it's unless you know how to use it, it's just hard to get through. Um, mm-hmm. It's back then. I think it was it was printed. I imagine mostly for priests, and so the the rubrics about where to turn, when to do the things, is just kind of hard. So so I can use this, but but um, but. It it has basically all the prayers you're going to need um, for a, a a basic prayer life, you know, in the church. I think it's also is. difficult. I think it's also difficult to use um, with other people because, like, the psalms don't have, like, yeah. they're not broken up into the way that we normally pray psalms. Do you know what I mean? That that yeah that that is probably I didn't want to air this publicly, but yes, that that that's one of my my biggest issues Sorry. with this is that it no it's just it's hard to that doesn't have the intentions for the psalms and things like that, and I've shared this with yeah. with but and, and I think I think that's just how the old one was. I think that's how it was, mm-hmm. and they basically just wanted to reprint it. So this is not the only prayer book we have, by the way. Go to Eastern Christian Publications. There's other much there's other prayer books that are that are the older translation, but that are much easier to use. The reason I bring this one up is because it is our current translation. Whereas the other ones are not. Um, so, so the one I the one thing I want to bring up from here, um, and that is from the, the Chasislav. From the Chasislav, from our Ruthenian okay. prayer book published in 2022. I do want to mention that in this prayer book, and these are easy enough to find, I'm sure online. I'm, I think everything I'm going to say is hopefully you can find online too. If you're if you can't get these prayer books, but um, their prayer books are just great to have. Um, the there's prayers before and after dinner. This is one thing that that I don't think most of us grew up with prayers after dinner. And mm-hmm. I, I I think that's a beautiful thing to do. And in all honesty, I don't have the after dinner prayers memorized. Um Whereas I, I think I should I have the I have the before dinner prayer memorized and I have a different translation than you're gonna hear about to hear memorized here. But there's something about in in our prayer life, and I've said this a million times, the beauty of praying before and after dinner is that you're going to do it every day. And so the beauty of this prayer is 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 turning something a basic human need like eating into a time of prayer. And you kind of sanctify that time and sanctify the action of eating by praying before and after the meal. Um so I grew up a uh, Roman Catholic and we prayed, you know, bless us Lord in these thy gifts before the meal. Um I know there are some uh, families who prayed after the meal. Usually it was for the deceased, I believe after the meal when they got up. But but it also, I think so many times in families and even as a celibate, the there's not a, 
there's not a specific start and end time to the meal as a cell, but there usually mm. is. Like I just, I make the food and then I pray and I sit and eat, but sometimes like I get distracted or I have to run off into something and I come back to the food. You know, it, 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 there's, there's just no beginning and end set time. But if you sanctify that space and sanctify the space and the time, give that to God. Eating is such a, a gift given to us by God and especially if it's done in communion with others. Um, again, this is why we use the image of heavenly banquet for, for heaven. You know, heaven is a meal. So um, basically in this prayer book, and if you have a Chasislav, this is on page 279, um, you begin with, and this, this is one of the confusing things about this book. It just says, begin with the Our Father. I don't know if that means all the Trisagian prayers before the Our Father or literally you just began with the Our Father. Um, it's not very clear. So Our Father, glory now endeavor, uh, three Lord have mercies and then to give the blessing. And then I this think book says- I that's pretty clear. I think that's not, I think that means you don't start with the Trisagian. Okay. You begin with would, the Our Father and the glory and the Lord have mercies. Because okay. why would I'm you- out of, out of curiosity and just to be problematic- um, Okay, so I'm looking at the public and prayer book, which is the Melkite version, of the, mm-hmm. the exact same thing. And I wanted to use yeah. our Ruthenian one for the translation. But this does begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. And then it says right into the Our Father. So you are correct. Even though there, there's yeah. another greeting um, that you just begin with the Our Father, which is what we do in, in most of our parishes, et cetera. You just begin with the Our Father. Um, mm-hmm. And then the one thing we don't do is, is, the, is the glory we do then do the three Lord have mercy. So maybe we'll incorporate the glory into, into our parish practice before our, our uh, dinners, etc. Mm-hmm. So then it says, Bishop, the Milan, or Bishop the... Milan would do that when he was here. Okay. And I think Amen. Bishop Robert did too. So they know about this. <laughs> okay. So then, and, and I, I bet they're following this book. I bet that's what the, mm-hmm. it's, it's like, it's like the books that say, you say glory forever instead of glory to him forever. And so certain nuns are not obedient to that, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I'm not going to complain. Um, certain nuns when, are obedient to their hegemena and give the response that their hegemena gives. Especially when certain nuns use the fact that I don't follow the book against me and then does not follow the book themselves um, for certain aspects. But um, moving on. Um, but so I would says, absolutely <laughs> approve of you following the bishop and I follow my hegemena, who's the bishop of my monastery, basically. You are right. I am wrong. Okay. Um, so th- then oh, it says- I love when you say that. <laughs> Then it says, the superior or the priest says. So this makes me think again, this book originally in the 60s was published for monasteries and priests. Um, Mm -hmm. I would say um, this is something, depending on what your spiritual father says, um, that the, the whoever is leading grace can say. Christ our God, bless the food and drink of your servants for you are holy always now and ever and forever, amen. Very simple. Simple, mm-hmm. but you're, you're, you're blessing the food. After dinner, now this is, by the way, you may know this, Mother, I do not, although I think I know just because of the order in here. The, the two things I'm about to talk about, say before prayers before and after dinner and prayer be, prayers before and after supper. In my New Mexico upbringing, those are the same thing. But is dinner considered lunchtime? Is, the, is dinner here what I would call lunch? Okay, most people correct. know that. And I, not. I, I know that only because of like, my grandma, like that was my grandma's generation would call lunch dinner and the evening meal okay. supper. supper. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't, that'd be interesting to see why that changed. Um, I mean, obviously it's just a cultural thing, but all right. And then, so the after dinner prayer, so this is actually lunch then after dinner prayer says, we give thanks to you, O Christ, our God, for having satisfied us with your earthly gifts. Do not deprive us of your heavenly kingdom, but just as you came among your disciples, giving them peace, O Savior, come also among us and save us. Three Lord have mercies. Then you say, give the blessing. Then the priest in this case says, blessed is God for dealing mercifully with us, for nourishing us with his abundant gifts by his grace and love for mankind, always, now and ever and forever. Amen. Uh, Then notice the may the poor eat and be filled or poor, maybe poor eat and be satisfied, which I always say before every meal. Um, when you have the prayers before and after supper, this says that going to the table, we say, may the poor eat and be filled. May they who seek oh. the Lord exalt in him and may their hearts live forever. So this is for supper. Then glory now and ever and forever. Amen. Lord have mercy three times. Give the blessing. And then the priest blesses the table. That must be the same blessing as before. That must be the same blessing as before. It just says the priest blesses the table. 
And then after eating, we say, glory to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever, amen. And then your womb became a sacred table, O Theotokos, for it held the bread of heaven, Christ our God, who said that everyone who eats of him shall live forever. And then, so beauty, beauty bringing the mother of God, where literally her womb becomes the Eucharistic table, you know, which is, I think yeah. is an absolutely beautiful image and a way of thanking God for the meal after dinner. Then you say uh, more Abba than the cherubim, which is the part of the mother of God. And then Psalm four, seven through nine. I'll just read it. I'll read the part of the mother of God for those of us who, who are listening, who do know it, who do not know it. More honorable than the cherubim, beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, who a virgin gave birth to God, the word, you truly the Theotogos we magnify. And then Psalm 4, O Lord, you are glad in your creation and in the works of your hand we rejoice. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You have put into my heart a greater joy than they have from the abundance of wheat, wine, and oil. I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once for you alone, Lord, made me dwell in safety. Glory now and ever and forever, amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Give the blessing and then the priest or the leader says, may God be with us. May his grace and love for mankind, by his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. That's very interesting about the the prayer before, that it's like that fuller version only at the evening meal. I don't know. Because, yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the grace that I pray before every meal. Um, may the poor Ian be satisfied and so on. Um, and but it's funny the, when you ask. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Uh-uh. I was going to say, it's funny when you ask different priests because certain priests have done it this way, but I've never know where, I never knew where they got it from. Where they begin mm-hmm. with, may the poor eat and be filled or may the poor eat and be satisfied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Lord have mercy and then the glory. Um, I but feel I've never like heard that's what Bishop Robert did with us. Okay. And Bishop Robert, he's the one I think that brought this to our attention at one point when he was here. Um, like he was commenting, I think on finding it interesting that this was in the Chasislav. And um, I think that might be what made him start doing it. I don't remember what he said for sure. But anyways, uh, but this is, I think this is what Holy Resurrection Monastery does. They, some of those prayers are definitely the ones that they said. I can't remember for sure if all of them are. What we do in our monastery is just sing It Is Truly Proper afterwards Mm. uh, or Shine and Splendor if it's the Paschal season. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I might petition for us to, yeah, take this up. And in the public and prayer book, there is a bunch of different options for before and after, just before and after a meal. So they don't have the distinguishing between supper and dinner, lunch and dinner. That There's just different mm-hmm. prayers and options. Um, see if there's any about the poor. Yep, okay. So there, there's a different version that has... May the poor Eden be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise him. I think I think the one that I do that I have memorized for the blessing I give is actually a like in the moment translation from Father Jack Custer from seminary days. He would Father oh, Jack Custer funny. knew all these prayers in Slavonic. He had them all memorized. So I think when he at, he tried to do something in English, he would literally just translate it in his head real time. Uh-huh. And so I think the version I do, which I've never heard anybody else do except him, I imagine that's actually like the the Father well, Jack. Well, the Custer. version I do is the version I got from you. <laughs> exactly, and then that's the one I put on my website, my parishes. So Father Jack's version is is going to be spanning the globe soon, just because of uh, everything online. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the, I wanted to mention that the, the prayer before and after meals, I would encourage families, individuals, whether you take these prayers or, or look for prayers in your own tradition, whatever that may be. Um, I, I would love to, I, I want to promote the, the prayer after meals, especially for families, because mm-hmm. I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of families that struggle with what to do at the end of a meal. Cause like they, mm-hmm. when they're done, do they get up and go play? Um, do does one kid run off to get homework done? Does one kid run off because he's got soccer practice that evening? You know, there's there's something about like what I will oftentimes do in adult ed, where I will, if the hour comes up and I guess say hey, I want to respect the hour, so we're going to finish in prayer, but then I have more time to stick around if anybody wants to, so that we finish in prayer and then as a community, and then people if whether they want to stick around later than they can. I imagine that may be a good thing. You of course you families discern this, but having an end to the prayer a prayer to end the meal. And then if some kid needs to run off to do something or something like that, then you can, you can extend it for those 
but there there's there's at least a and I, I'm a huge fan of basically parents, if at all possible, making it a requirement that the family gathers for at least one meal a day together without the TV on, um, you know, things like that. So that there there can be something intentional there. And um, yeah, I, I also absolutely. know though, for for some families that can be very intimidating. It's like it's like I've I've often thought if you have a, a couple married for 25 years. And there are some couples married for 25 years or just a long time that, and if you ask them, or if you ask yourself, if that's you, like, when's the last time you said, I love you to your spouse? Say it's been 20 years. Say you say it for the first five years of your life, and then you you get on with life and you just haven't said, I love you for a long time. Um, We, you know, some of us can be, oh oh my gosh, horrified by that, that you haven't said it, but I kind of get it. You just get on with life and you just kind of forget to do those things. But it's really hard then to to say it again because mm-hmm. after 20 years of not saying it and and you know then you you're, you you got to kind of say well, I I'm I got to say something very heartfelt but also very gentle endearing that's not practical like if if me and my wife have lived in the world of the practical taking care of the kids getting our jobs you know just kind of getting it done you know, cranking through the day, and then all of a sudden, I'm reintroducing something that I want to do that 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 is outside of the practical, but is just literally an "I love you." I think that that can be an awkward moment for some couples if it's been a while. And I would just encourage you to do it. Just do it. Embrace like, the awkward. Into, then embrace that's, the awkwardness. <laughs> that's how Mother Natalia lives life. <laughs> yeah. And I don't even know, like, like you guys discern, like, do you make a big deal of it? Do you kind of lead in with it and then say it, then process? Or do you just say it in passing as you're running out the door and see if it sticks, you know, see if the other person says it back? I don't know. I'm not married. I don't know how these things work. But I, I think it's it's good to kind of bring those things back and in, in the same way, you know, maybe you have not had dinner with your kids. Maybe you've sat with a TV tray in front of the TV for years now, and all of a sudden you're supposed to tell your 13 year old that, by the way, we're having dinner together now. Like, that could be hard. The kid's like, what, really? This is not what we do. And you're like, look, new new thing, new thing, and it's beautiful. You know, we're going to start with one night a week, then we're going to go with three an attitude. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. And you're, you're going to accept this as beautiful. Um, yeah. So, I, I, in the same way that I love you can be awkward after time, I know these things can be awkward for families because um, if it has not been done in a while, just lean into it. It'll probably take your kids or even your spouse or even yourself some time to see the beauty in these things that that are, Mm. I really do think, built into us and built into the family structure. But I do think in this case that prayer at the end of the meal, whether you are celibate like me and just need to kind of sanctify the time in between the two prayers without getting distracted by a million different things that you jump up and do. Um, mm-hmm. Or you're just you're whatever it is, whatever it is. Finish finish me with a prayer, whether the ones that are in these books, once something you Google online or something you make up, even. But it's really sweet when uh, when my nieces and nephews come here. They um, like they're so familiar with how we do meals here that even the the three year old she just turned three. If you were to ask her, like. Bella, when is when is the meal over? Then she would say, "When Mother Cecilia stands up and we sing." Like oh. they know it's it's really really sweet. Um, and uh, I just really, or if one of the kids is getting a little antsy and they want to get up from the table, um, they'll get down from their chair and they'll walk to the head of the table and ask the hegumena um, if they can get down. It's really really adorable. Um, and That's she awesome. has always said yes. But <laughs> um, the. The other thing that we do at our monastery that um, I mentioned only because I think some people might want to adopt this into their own routines, especially if they, well, yeah, I think, especially if they have older kids or if they're single or married or whatever. Um, but we, so in some monasteries, they have spiritual reading throughout the meal and everyone just eats in silence. Um, I'm not advocating for that in your families, Uh, but in our monastery, we just have spiritual reading for like five minutes ish at the beginning of dinner. And we might be reading from lives of the saints or right now we're reading through Pope Francis's 
Wednesday audiences, the catechesis on prayer that he gave from 2020 to 2021. Um, And those are beautiful. I would encourage people to look that up. Speaking of prayer, he has these, um, yeah, his Wednesday audiences for about a year were a catechesis on prayer and they were just, they're amazing. Um, And each one of them is about five, seven minutes-ish. So we just read one of those at the beginning of dinner. Um, But my parents have adopted this. So at their house at the beginning of dinner, it's just the two of them and my grandma, but even when the grandkids are over, I think they still do it, but um, they'll just read uh, not necessarily five minutes, but they'll read like a little section from a book. I think right now they're finishing up mother Eliana's book, I think. Um, And yeah, so that's also a, that's yeah. That's beautiful because I have found, and I think I've said this before, but I'll share it again, that, that one of my, penances, one of my ascetical practices during the fasts is to not listen to music in the car. So I'll listen to this, I'll do something mm. else other than music. Um, sometimes I'll do silence if, if I feel that that's the, the, the good thing to do during that ascetical season. But um, during the lesser fasts or on, on the lesser fasting days, I will, I'll do half my ride with music and half with, without. And then usually mm. if I do that, I try to spend at least half of it just in prayer Jesus' prayer, you know, Trisagian prayers, depending on how long the ride is or just in silence in prayer. But what I find is that I usually I'll pick like, a, if I know the drive, I'll pick a landmark and I'll say, okay, that's mm-hmm. about halfway. Mm-hmm. But then I'll decide, do I want to listen to music in the first half or the second half? And, <laughs> and usually you think through my, which half has more traffic. <laughs> well, right, right. right. And, and so but there, there is an ADHD element there where I kind of discern, I say, Am I even in the right mindset to pray right now? If I'm not, I'm going to listen mm-hmm. to music and then kind of ex- like have that settle me down. I feel and, about that. And then I'll pray the second half. Um, and I do that and it's great. I, I'm actually quite diligent about that. I, the music, you know, at least it, it's separate. whatever was on my mind before getting in the car that I was like, I, that's not the most conducive time to prayer. I'll do the second half and I'll, also I'll do that. But if I pray in the first half, I usually end up praying the entire trip. Sometimes I do switch at, at the landmark, but mm. it just, when you begin with prayer, it becomes so much more obvious that this is obviously the more fruitful thing to do. Like prayer is, is an infinitely greater than listening to music or podcasts or anything like that. And so usually I will, the prayer itself will lend, lend a hand to me understanding how beautiful prayer is. And so I think turn that's this kind of, podcast off and pray. Yeah, <laughs> let this inspire you to do that. Then come back and finish the episode. Um, but but there is there is something again. We've like the Trisagium prayers, right? We Byzantines have these. Trisagium refers to the thrice holy, 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 um, holy God, holy, mighty, holy, mortal one, have mercy on us. And and these are these are prayers that you just begin every almost every single prayer with, and it it basically as a human being in a brief time it it. it orients your entire self to prayer through prayers you have memorized. So I can tell you that that if I pray the Drasagian prayers before I pray a psalm, I'm almost always more able to actually pray that psalm. And mm. then rather than if I just start praying a psalm, because I have a couple psalms, mem- psalms memorized, if I just start praying a psalm without the Trisagium prayers, without this maybe 30 seconds of prayer beforehand, culminating in the Our Father, then oftentimes my, my mind is not on the psalm. It's like I didn't take mm-hmm. that time to kind of settle my mind. My mind's still on whatever I was thinking about before praying. Um, Can you seriously pray the Trisagium prayers in 30 seconds? Yeah. I mean, I would have to, I'd have to actually measure it. That seems it, but, um, really fast. I don't think, well, just in my head, if I'm doing it in my head. Like how long would the Our Father take on its own? No, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, just, <laughs> I don't know. 30 <laughs> seconds is, is a rando guess. I, I don't know okay. exactly. I'll, I'll have to time okay. it. Okay. Um, I just, Not I right just now. feel like the shorter I'm saying, the less holy I sound. So I'm going to, I'm going to say it takes me about three minutes. <laughs> oh, I misspoke. I meant, I meant three minutes when I'm lost in meditation. <laughs> for, Okay, um, let's move on. Public and prayer book. You haven't touched that yet, and we only have 15 right. minutes left. Public and prayer book. Um, this, is, this is something I literally just found like moving through the prayer book. So if you have a public and prayer book on page 71, um, there is the prayer rule of St. Pacomius. Um, this is, I, this is um, 
Actually, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm real. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, also, I just to clarify, in case you're nervous about time, I meant 15 minutes before we start our wrap up. I didn't mean we need to okay. be done in 15 minutes. Okay. okay. I will, I will, I will make sure I'm done. Um, so I'm actually going to read this whole thing because it's, it's not that long. Um, so this is called the prayer rule of St. Pacomius. <laughs> Everything takes 30 seconds of my life. It's a good, good round number. Um, so this is, again, a lot of these prayer traditions came when people could not read. So they, the monks who generally could read or just memorize the Psalms, the Psalms have always been the, the core of the prayer of the church ever since before Christ, you know, even with, with, with Judaism. Um, the Psalms were probably written by tradition about a thousand years before Christ. Um, so now they've been around for 3000 years. For 3000 years, people have been praying the Psalms um, as, as kind of the core of, of a prayer rule, a prayer day. We've talked about um, the cathisma and the stasis and things like this on previous episodes. And we talk about how to utilize the ordering and the praying of the Psalms in, in a daily prayer rule. But um, to do that, you have to be able to read or you have to have them memorized. And that, that was the case in the early church. And you, know, you either could read or many people just had them memorized because people memorize things better. And there were no numbering of the Psalms um, in the beginning. So you literally just identified Psalms by the first few words. And that's why some have said that when Christ says on the cross, oh God, um, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That literally is just the title of the Psalm. It's, it's not, it's not, that's not all he said. He may have said the entire Psalm, um, but he identified it by just saying the beginning of it, or he said the beginning of it, knowing that what that meant was he was praying the entire thing and people knew that from the cross. Which, I, which I've realized is like, I can very easily believe that the 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 bit about like maybe he just said the opening lines, knowing that people would know what comes next. Because, um, like one of the things that I'll often say uh, in in community life here is if um, if like something goes poorly because of like um, because of something like some, I make a stupid decision and then things get messed up because of it. I'll often, when the things get messed up, I'll say my wounds are foul and festering. Um, because I mm. know that everyone in the community knows the Beautiful. next line is the result of my own folly. <laughs> That's um, awesome. So I love that. a lot of us, a lot of us will do that. We'll just be like, my wounds are foul and festering. And everyone knows that like, without knowing the Psalm, that makes it sound like, oh, poor me. But if you know the Psalm, uh, which we all do because we prayed in the chapel all the time, then we know that the person is saying, um, well, I've called, like, I've brought this upon myself. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. I love that that's actually happening in our monasteries somewhere. So, by the way, if, <laughs> if, in, in your Bible at home, you're, you're going to, if you look up Psalm 22, which is, is most Bibles, is Psalm 22, it, which is where it begins, my God, my God, if I have forsaken me, that Christ is on the cross. And you can read the entire Psalm, you'll see that it, it is a horrifying, horrifying Psalm, but it also ends with, with hope. Um, so, I'm just going to read straight out of the out of the section of the book called the Prayer of Saint Pacomius. And again, this is this is probably for those as as it references here, those who who are lay people or who want to be holy, but but either don't have the Psalms memorized or could not read at the time. Um, I'm about to embarrass myself on video and and put on my reading glasses because I'm old. Um, so. That's fine. I do want to say real quick. I want to go back to my criticism of the Chasislav. Because I also suspect that the intention of this book was for people to be, you look so cute with your glasses. I love it. Oh, thank um, you. For people to be, um, like most people, this is like for them to be able to have this private prayer, like to be able to participate in the prayer of the church, but not necessarily in a group of people. And so a lot of these people are probably like praying the Psalms without um the normal. So I, I, if I get, if I get in trouble for saying this and I, I'm going to completely accept a correction, especially from my superiors. Um, the impression I get is that, is that we, we in the Ruthenian church have been trying to put together a Chasislav with a new translation for a long time. And we just, because of the various um, personalities and the various bureaucracy involved in putting out an official prayer book. It just has not happened. So I think what this was, was Bishop Kurt and Jack Fiegel basically saying, let's just, let's just not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. 
And mm. so this is, this is already an approved and promulgated text so yeah. from 1966. So they literally said, we won't need to go through all the bureaucracy if we only put out a new translation of the exact same book. So it, it Which wasn't, I really appreciate that they like yeah. are giving the people access Correct. to it our modern It was just as best as we yeah. can do right now yeah. because they, they because of the bureaucracy they could not do more. So I don't think this is actually an attempt to be user friendly. It's not. It's literally just putting out a prayer book because something is better than nothing. You know, which yeah. which I commend, but also yes, it, it it is very hard, and I've I've talked to people about this, and uh, uh, and and all the right people understand and are trying to do something. Um, yeah, to, absolutely. To remedy that. So, but yes. Okay, so here here is the just the prayer rule of Saint Pacomius, page seventy one. An angel of God taught Saint Pacomius, who died in three forty six, a simple rule of prayer for the vast community of monks under his guidance in the Egyptian desert. This rule of the angel, which St. Pacomius prayed every hour, consists of basic prayers that every Christian should have committed to memory. The Trisagium prayers, Psalm 50, the Creed, 100 Jesus prayers, and, quote, it is truly right, end quote. As it is easy to memorize, it can be prayed at any time or any place in any circumstance that is required. This rule may, be repl- this rule may replace one's morning and night prayers. So again, this is this is basically a little gift to people that want to to learn how to pray that don't necessarily know how or can't. Here it is. The rule of St. Pacomius is the pattern for the canonical hours of the Byzantine Orologian. Where the Psalms replace the Jesus prayers, it may be used in place of the Orologian, where the number of Jesus prayers generally prescribed are as follows. 300 Jesus prayers for Orthros, Matins, 150 for Vespers, 100 for Compline, and 50 for each little hour. That'd be first, third, sixth, and ninth. So four times a day, you pray 50. In addition, St. John Cashin, who died in 435, who spent some 20 years as a monk of Palestine and Egypt, reports that the rule of the angel also included the practice of reciting 12 Psalms. That's also later in the same book. He cites the following story in the origin of the tradition. There rose among the desert monks a pious discussion about the number of Psalms to be prayed at the divine services. As the brethren conversed, the time for Vespers arrived before the question was settled. As they all gathered for prayer, an angel appeared in their midst and began to chant the psalms. When the angel had finished the twelfth psalm with the response of Alleluia, suddenly he disappeared from their sight. Thus was the question of the number of psalms we prayed resolved by angelic intervention. St. John Cashin later traveled to Constantinople, where he became a close disciple of St. John Chrysostom, who ordained him a deacon, as well as to Rome, where he formed a friendship with the archdeacon Leo, who would become the Pope of Rome, St. Leo the Great. So that's the entire section I just read. So basically, uh, all I'm saying is that if if you if you catch yourself the spirit inspiring you to acknowledge the hour of the day, because basically one of the things I love so much about our orologian, the way that we pray the office of hours, matins, vespers, first, third, sixth, ninth hour, compline, all these different prayers is they're prayed at a certain point of the day. And on those days, the entire Byzantine world, Catholic and Orthodox are all praying the same Psalms. It's, it's beautiful, you know? Um, mm-hmm. If we were on the same calendar, it'd be more accurate to say that, but, um, but close enough, you know, we're, we're all praying it on our own calendars. But so I love the fact that even if you're praying alone, you're tapping into the communal prayer of the entire body of Christ, the communal over the entire church in that moment. So if you want that experience, if you want to know that you're praying along with the church and say you're driving, say you're busy taking care of your kids, say that you just you 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 don't have the time or the ability in that moment to stop and to pray with the rest of the church at sunup, sundown, whatever it may be, you can just do these things. Say the Trisagium prayers. And then if it's in the morning, 300 Jesus prayers, which is by the way, Lord Jesus Christ, son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Very short. And you, our Chotki beads that we usually use, they're either three, 33 beads or 100 beads. You can, these prayer beads are meant to count so you can do things like this. You know, so you Some can of them know. Have 50. Exactly. So everybody 33, have. 50 or 100. So, so obviously do the math in that case. And then some have 
totally other numbers that, that are that are totally different. You know, the, the number really mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Um, but if you know how many there are on your prayer beads, then in the morning you can pray 300 Jesus prayers. And I, I tell you, this is a gift from the angel as we heard in that story. This is a gift from the angel. And I would argue that, that you are praying along with the monks, the nuns in the parishes. Basically, our Lord is, is allowing that to be your participation in a monastic prayer. So if you're getting, getting your kids up in the morning, just start praying the Jesus prayer. If you can count off 300, that's great. If you, if you can't, just guess it's around 300. You know? and, and that is literally you being fulfilling your vocation and yet also tapping into the very real prayer of the church that is happening all over the world at that time. Again, 300 in the morning, 150 in the evening, 100 right before you go to bed and 50 for basically every three hours throughout the day, you know, as those. And this is, I mean, this is what we do in our community when someone can't attend a prayer service. Like if they have a doctor appointment or something like that, they're given, Beautiful. typically they're given Jesus, like a number of Jesus prayers or a time of Jesus prayer um, in place of the service that they're missing. Like that's very, yeah. And so the Jesus prayer can be memorized by anybody, you know, it, it, that, mm-hmm. that's such a, a beautiful thing about it. Um, okay. I have, uh, I have uh, one very quick thing to mention. If you have this book on page uh, 202, the Republican Prayer Book. This is still the it's Republican called, Prayer Book? Okay. It's still the Republican Prayer Book, page 202. The Optima Prayer Rule of the 500. So this is, I'm not going to read it. This is just basically another prayer rule that, that can be used by monastics, but especially by lay people to have a prayer rule that is is based upon monastic prayer, but also is unique and is, is memorizable and is doable. Mm-hmm. So it's another way of saying I have a prayer rule that I can stick to. I can make sure I'm getting the whole thing in and it's short, it's memorizable, it's doable. So this, for some people, this will be a first step in moving to the actual liturgy of the hours, the actual orologian. And some people, this will just be how their prayer rule is every day. You know, this is like for the rest of their life. But these are our, our ancient prayer rules. So this one's from like 19th century Russia. So it's it's more recent, but it's still a great prayer rule that comes in like five parts and you can read it on page 202 if you want. Um, so that's like an alternative to the Pacomius one that we already heard. So I'm just gonna throw that out there because that one's a little more complicated so I didn't wanna talk about it. The last thing I wanna talk about um, from this prayer there's book also, is There's if, also, if people wanna look it up, I think there's also, there's a prayer rule of St. Seraphim of Sarov. Is that, the, do you know what I'm talking the about? The prayer rule of the mother of God? Yeah. Oh, we should do a whole episode on that. So it, it's okay, it, it's a lot of people call it the Byzantine Rosary, but it's actually more ancient than the than the Rosary. Mm-hmm. Um, and and but also the so rosary your rosary, is, rosary is actually your rosary is actually your Roman Newfangled, rule yeah. of Saint Seraphim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, uh, it's actually true because it's it's actually not true because Saint yeah. Dominic didn't invent the Rosary. We normally say yeah, the yeah. 13th century, but it, there was actually a version of it before him. He just kind of popularized it. So both sure. both prayer rules, the Mother of God, <laughs> using uh, what we now call a Rosary, are very very ancient. We're East just and West. teasing. But just look up the prayer rule of the Theotokos if you want to look up the Byzantine version of, mm-hmm. of what most of us who are converse in Roman Catholicism um, understand the rosary to be in, in the Byzantine world. And we could do a whole episode on that. We should bring my sister-in-law in, though. She, My sister-in-law loves that prayer, Rebecca. Oh, that'd um, be fun. She's yeah, even, yeah. I think, written a blog on it, um, on some mommy blog somewhere. All right. The last thing I want to talk about is on page 89. I'm just going to read the whole thing again um, because it's beautiful. Um, this is just a daily examination of conscience. So mm. we do, the book actually has an examination of conscience to be done before you go to confession. And it's beautiful. It's long. It comes with an entire canon of prayers. It comes with the 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 guide that's examination of conscience and all the prayers that go around it before you walk into confession. It's beautiful. Um, but mm. this is just a daily examination of conscience. And you can see, I'll read it. It's short. It's simple. You can look at this before you go to bed and make sure you do everything it says in here. Now, I'm going to say, again, a lot of these were written and we, we need to have, I, I'm just going to say this is not for everybody. If people are more prone to shame, I have a beautiful spiritual daughter, a beautiful, beautiful spiritual daughter who was raised hearing that the word mercy only meant begging Jesus to forgive you because he probably won't. 
You know, that mm. that's when she hears the word mercy, that's what it means. So even praying the Jesus prayer, when she says, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, like that word mercy triggers just a lot of brokenness and damage and history. So, you know, there, there are people like that with, this may not be for you and you can adapt it even you go through the guidance of your pastor or spiritual director, mentor, whatever. But here's what it says in the book. I think it's a good guide that's helpful. Very simply, it is a great help towards not sinning and not falling into the same sins on the following day if at the end of the day we judge ourselves in our conscience as far as we can when we have done wrong and what we have done right. That's a quote from St. Basil the Great. Then it says, at the end of the day, examine your conscience in all humility using the points suggested below. There's just five points. Point number one, give thanks to Almighty God for granting you his gifts of life and health during the past day. Beautiful. Start with thanksgiving. In a sense, start with praise. Number two, examine your conscience going through each hour of the day, beginning from the time of your rising and recall to mind where you went how you acted and reacted towards all persons and creatures. Consider with care all your thoughts, words, and deeds from morning till evening. Point number Man, three. that's basically what our last episode was. Not our last episode. The last episode was yours two episodes ago when I was talking about examining our reactions to others. And yes, very much Where that so. was coming from, yeah. Mm-hmm. Love it, yeah. So this is, this is exactly it. This is a little, little thing you can do. And by the way, I, I can't tell you how simple this sounds and yet how hard it is for me mm-hmm. living in, in a world of constant distraction. And I'm a priest. I should be much better at this than I am to actually sit down and do this. I mean, like as, for those of you that are not watching the video, as I start saying this, mother just closes her eyes. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I, I, I envy your <laughs> ability to kind of like sit there peacefully and just soak it in. Like we rarely, really intentionally soak something in. So I highly... Mm-hmm encourage you to do this. Um, it's just it, to take that time to go through every hour of the day. Like nobody does that anymore. Nobody does that. And it, it can be such a powerful, again, begin with thanking God, go through the day, every hour, the good, the bad. This can even, I think, help me if I did this. I'm trying to do that. I've been doing it for the last couple of months. But to do it, even to improve, improve my memory, because I forget mm-hmm. a lot of things. And if I actually mm-hmm. go through the day, if I go through names, I try to remember names. Um, I was I was with my buddy Lyric at uh, at a a restaurant last night, and we went there. And Lyric's amazing at uh, at names. He he, like, he really intentionally tries to remember names. And I brought him to this restaurant, and I was so proud because he just loved it. He was like, "Oh my gosh, this is my new favorite spot." And Ly- Lyric's like, he's he's an actor. He hangs up Beverly Hills all the time. Like he knows all the hot spots in Los Angeles. And here I am bringing to a new spot that is like going to be his new hangout. So he, to to do this he's really leaning into the names. He's like, "Okay, I'm going to I'm going to learn the names." Um so there's this woman her name is Tanaz and that's her she's Iranian, she's a friend of mine. And so when I get there she runs up and gives me a hug. And then he says, "Okay, what's her name?" And I was like, no idea, but I like it's it's an Iranian name. I I I see her all the time. It's been a while though, but I I said I don't know. It's a unique name. So so basically, I was like, I need to hear it and then I need to write it down. So I'll put it in my phone so mm. I remember. So we're going by, he's learning all the other names. I know this is Danny, bartender, guy Danny, girl Danny. I'm, I'm ex- introducing all these people. And then all of a sudden, he comes, he asks the bartender, okay, what's her name? And, and the bartender says, her name is Tanaz. So like, okay, so I write it down on my phone. And, and this is like after we've been there an hour. And so Tanaz comes running by and, and Lyric turns around and goes, Tanaz. And she goes, Lyric. And he's shocked, shocked. He's like, wait, I was going to ask you to, like, what was my name? And she's like, oh, I'm, I'm amazing at this. And like, literally he said her name and then she just said his name. And I was like, that, that's, that's amazing. But I want to be that way. And one of the ways I can maybe do that is do what Lyric does, where I can just, at the end of the day, you literally go through all the people you meet, say their names in your head, pray for the, pray for the intentions of those who are hurting, those who are joyful, whatever it is. Okay, point three. If you have done any good, <laughs> close your eyes. If, if, if you have done any good, do not ascribe it to yourself, but to God who gives every good thing and thank him. Pray that he may strengthen you in this good and enable you to do other good things. Point four. If you I'm have grateful done, that this is mentioned. Hold on. I'm grateful that. Please. Please. 
that this is mentioned just because, um, like a good examination of conscience always has this, you know, like, like Ignatius of Loyola's examine and things like that are, uh, they do include the good of the day, but I think your average Christian, if you ask them about an examination of conscience, they would not immediately think that that was part of it. They would just think that this is going through my day and thinking of all the things I did wrong. Um, yeah. Which, so anyways, I just appreciate that that's, because of which course it's in there, much, because it's in any good examination, but I just want to point that out to people that like, yeah. Which is very much like my spiritual daughter. She only heard the word mercy in a very negative context. Right, And yeah, so yeah. It's, it's important to, to say every day I look back and I say, Jesus actually wants me to recall the good things that he and I mm-hmm. did together. All right, point four. If you have done anything evil, admit that this comes from yourself, from your own weaknesses, bad habits, and weak will. Repent and pray to the lover of mankind to forgive you and firmly resolve to avoid this evil in the future. Mm. And I just love that the title, <laughs> there are so many titles for Jesus. And the title given Ugh. in this one where we're thinking about sins is the lover of mankind. Basically, mm-hmm. It, all the things that you did wrong. Not the judge, not the... <laughs> right, exactly. Pray yeah. to the one who loves you, you know, that you may, and firmly resolve that you will never do this again in the future. You know, talk to the one who loves you, who's also the judge, but he's also the one who loves you. Point number five, employ your creator with tears to grant you a quiet, pure, and sinless night and to enable you on the coming day to devote yourself wholly to the glory of his name. And I would actually really encourage those who want to do this. And by the way, this is so short. I could even, we could even take a picture of this. I'm going to ask Bishop Francois if we can give this out. If, if, you, if anybody wants to see this, let me ask. I'm going to ask the, the Melkite Bishop. Um, but if I, it may be even something I can take. It's, it's one page. I can take a picture of my phone and we can email it out. If you, if you want this, you can contact us and I'll ask about the prayer of Pocomius as well. Um, but uh, if you can buy the book, if it's in print, I highly recommend it. Cause I, I may even do a multiple episodes on things like this. Cause there's so much beauty, so many beautiful things here. I'm sure the prayer will of Pocomius people could just find online. Okay. Yeah. Amen. This particular I, examination, if you want them to use this particular one, you should ask to take a picture, but the prayer will of Pocomius, certainly you could just find online. And you spell Pocomius P-A-C-H-O-M-I-O-S in this, in this translation. Oh, we usually spell it U-S. P-A-C-H-O-M-I-O-S in this translation. So that if you, but you can probably do I-U-S as well and find it. We just had his feast day a couple of days ago. Yes, we did. And then one of his followers um, the day after that in Theodore, the consecrated. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. I only say that because there's some debate and I don't, I don't know about this world enough, but there's some debate about and I'm not going to get into this right now at this point in the podcast, but when it comes to deaconesses, were they ordained or consecrated? Like I, sometimes the Orthodox mm-hmm. will distinguish those words between ordination and consecration. So when I saw Theodore the Consecrated, I thought, oh, you know, it just it just made me think I need to look more into that, though the, the defining those two terms in the life of the church. Okay, so th- those five points. So yes, pray at the end of meals. Um, You can pray the Jesus prayers at various parts of the day and have your own prayer aligned with the prayer of those like Mother Natalia who are praying um, most, if not all the hours. And and then this daily examination of conscience where you take the time to actually go through your day, thank God, apologize to the lover of mankind, and then and then pray for a restful night. It's usually done at the end of the day. That's and then pray that you may you may have a good sleep at the night. So and I will ask Bishop Francois if, if I can do that. Um, we shall see. Okay, anything else, Mother? Reflections on any of those or advice to our dear listeners? Oh, I think that's great. I think we should close. I need to go get dinner ready. Cool. <laughs> all right. Um, thank you all for listening. If there's anything in this episode or any episodes that you think would be helpful to share with others, please do. We're on Instagram, Facebook. I'm on Twitter at Potter Michael O. We are on YouTube, um, either video or audio only. We're still trying to figure that out. Uh, we have a Goodreads page where you can see what we're reading and we can see what you're reading. Uh, we have a nonprofit called Fotina, P-H-O-T-I-N-A, that 
um, supports this evangelization effort, as well as the wider church, as well as the poor and the outcast, as well as other projects that are doing similar things, you can uh, support us at fotina.org, or you can go to our Patreon page, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, look up what God is not, and there's various levels of support um, with various what we call benefits. I imagine you would be a benefit um, to meet Mother Talia. You can also meet me if you want. Um, and and other things like that, depending on the levels. Uh, you get stickers, you get shout outs, um, you get to suggest a mini topic, et cetera, things like that. You can have little Zoom, uh, not Zoom, but uh, little videos that we send out to our listeners sometimes, et cetera. So, but that being said, Mother has five shout outs as we try to catch up. Um, since this is a new tradition of ours, as we try to catch up, so we have new patrons soon, but for now we're just going to be catching up with the old ones. So, Mother, please, five patrons. Yeah, which I feel just super loved because we've been doing five every episode for months now, like trying to catch <laughs> up. Amen. And we're, we're finally almost caught up, but I just feel I just feel super loved. Um, okay, so thank you to Deb E. from California, Daniel K. from Pennsylvania, Chris B. from Virginia, and then PH with no address. And page M with no address. Thank you all. Appreciate it immensely. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, prayer intention. I am going to ask everybody to pray for a man named Lupe. That's what we call him. His name is Guadalupe, but I love I love for men it being actually for women too, but shortened to Lupe, um, who's a uh, a good friend of our parish here. And just if you could pray for him, his health, and his family. Um, I'm going to ask for prayers for a woman, a woman named Rayo, who she was on. She was one of our backstage listeners several episodes ago. Um, we need to do that again. But uh, anyways, she sent me a Mother's Day card, um, and I haven't. I just got it today. I haven't yet read. Um, the letter that came with it, because I was like, this is going to make me cry, and I can't do this right before recording. But <laughs> um, I met her and at Seek, I think. And then um, she was also a backstage listener and said these like beautiful things. Anyways, she's just like such a gift to my motherly heart. Uh, and she also sent money, Father Michael, for you and I to buy beers the next time we're together because um, she wanted to alleviate both of us of any beer bet debt. Um, <laughs> so we are now oh, we are now set free from any beers that we owe each other. And she sent more than enough money for that to happen. Um, so we well, now Ryle, owe each other zero beers. Gift to me and not Mother Talia because I owed her <laughs> a bunch. And she didn't owe yeah, me you any. definitely so owe I, me way I, more. But. I appreciate it immensely. That's a great idea. That's awesome. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. When one of us has a beer, the other also has one. So we're both winning in this. <laughs> That's um, why it's such a brilliant so. bet. You bet things that you want to do anyway. So pray for for Arayo, not only because she gave us money for beer, but because she's just a really beautiful gift to my motherly heart. Um, and I think that's it. Father, can you give us a blessing? Of course. Love you, Mother. Thank you. Love you, too. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause His face to shine upon you, have mercy on you. May you go forth this day in union with the body of Christ, His church. May you be always seeking to configure through Christ's power yourself with this church, through prayer rule, through examination of conscience, through incorporating uh, the things that you're already doing every day, like eating, um, into a, a prayer life and a prayer rule. May our Lord give you diligence in this and perseverance in this. May he allow you to discern and to bring others into your discernment to help understand what a good prayer rule is for you. And may you seek out and may our Lord send you help in this way, whether it's a prayer book or something you find online or something that someone shares with you about a way of, of allowing every day to be truly for God's greater glory, for your own holiness, and eventually the salvation of your soul. May our Lord bless you in all these things now and always. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.